What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my ultimate guide to rank resurgence. Everything you need to know. We're gonna be talking about the scoring system. We're gonna be breaking down the gameplay. We're gonna be breaking down the best perks and equipment to use. And I'm gonna be showing you guys strong places to play around the map. I hope this answers a lot of your questions, but if you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. And I'll get back to as many of you as possible. First I go whip out the bow. No, I can't hit on no bricks. My life is out of control. I'm telling you, nobody's safe. I've been living my life. Let's take a look at the scoring system for rank resurgence. So on the top line here, we have death fees, and you can see the death fee increases as you rank up. These are the skill divisions. Here we have the placement points. So for top 12, you get 20 points. Top eight, you get 40. Top five, you get 60. Top three, you get 80. If you win the game, you get 100 total points. Now you only get an extra 20 points if you hit these thresholds. Kills and assists, you wanna keep this in mind. Once you get to top eight, you wanna make sure you get as many kills as possible. Once you get to top three, each kill and assist is worth 10 points. That's a lot. As most of you know, season two reloaded just dropped. They made some SR adjustments for ranked resurgence. As you can see, the final placement SR has been adjusted to the below values. Now these are all reductions. All the way through top three, you're gonna get less SR for placement which means you're going to have to make up for that in kills. Okay, so in this portion of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the Fortune's Keep ranked map, and we're going to be looking at very strong places to play, strong positions around the map, places where you can get a lot of assists and kills from. General rule of thumb here, you're going to want to play high ground around the map. I'm going to point out some very good locations to play, starting with the left side of the map, Overlook. This set of houses right here is a very strong area to play. Uh, also in town, this library building with the tower is a very strong place to play. Moving over towards graveyard, this graveyard spiral tower is a very strong place to play. It only has two walkways up and you can get a lot of shots on people in this area. Uh, towards keep, you're gonna wanna play the roof of keep. You're gonna get a lot of shots on people in the surrounding areas if you're on the roof. Another strong place to play is this other tower. Now it's not as strong as the previously mentioned one, but it's still a very strong place to play. You can get a lot of shots off on people in the surrounding areas. Another strong place to play is at this building that I call a radio. You get a lot of shots on people down here and a lot of shots on people towards lighthouse. Speaking of lighthouse, another strong place to play is the lighthouse. Lighthouse Tower. You can get a lot of shots on people in the lighthouse surrounding area. Now, if you find yourself in winery, a strong place to play would be either in the winery tower or the rooftop of this building. As a general rule of thumb, though, you're always going to want to play high ground on this map. Towards end game, you're going to want to make sure you have high ground. It's a lot easier to rotate to the first moving circle if you're on high ground. Uh, these power positions, kind of that I just talked about briefly, are very strong places to play around the map and they're safe places to play around the map and you can get a lot of kills and assists from them. But now, I want to talk about the best perks and equipment to use. First, I want to start with why we're not going to be given loadout, meta guns, and stuff like that is because the meta is forever changing. It's always going to update every couple weeks, every couple months. So I don't want to give you guys a meta loadout, quote unquote. It's going to change in a couple days or a couple weeks or something like that. You're definitely going to want to run either smoke grenades or stims are good, but my preference is definitely smoke grenades. Uh, they help you get out of so many different situations. They're really good for rotating, especially during end game. So I would highly recommend running smoke grenades. As for lethals, you can run uh, Bettys or proxy mines if you like to play a little bit slower. I prefer running Simtexes. They're very versatile. You can use them in many different ways. Frag grenades are also very good. Throwing knives are good for either the one shot kill or thirsting the down players. And frag grenades are good because you can cook them and basically surprise your enemies with them. Out of those four, I would highly recommend running uh, nades if you're a more aggressive player or Bettys if you're a slower player that likes to play positioning. Now for perks, I highly recommend running double time, mountaineer, tempered, and high alert. Double time is useful because you're constantly running around the map. It lets you sprint around and get the places faster. Mountaineer is super useful on Fortune's Keep because it allows you to not pull your shoot when you fall from buildings or jump off things. So you can jump on your opponents. You can run away from your opponents a lot easier. Now for perk three, I prefer tempered. Another good one you can run is quick fix or restock. If you like playing a little bit slower, restock is good. Quick fix is also very good for getting your health back as soon as you start the plate or when you down an enemy. However, I prefer tempered because only having to apply two plates saves you a lot of time throughout the game and plates are sometimes hard to come by and so only having to pop two plates to get full health is 
super useful. Now for the perk four slot, I prefer high alert. It has a very long range to it. So if someone looks at you from behind from very far away, I'm not sure the exact meter, but it gives you time to react and it gives you time to turn around and find where they're at basically and be ready for the fight. Another one I could also recommend is flex as it gives you a lot better audio and it delays Betty's Claymore's sound suppression mines, stuff like that from going off when you first walk by them. So you can kind of just run past Claymore's and go shoot your enemies because they're expecting their claymores to go off or something like that. So I'd recommend running uh, one of those two. High alert is definitely my preference. My meta perks are double time, mountaineer, tempered, and high alert. Okay, in this portion of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys some top 250 ranked gameplay. I'm going to be showing you guys our strats and why we're doing what we're doing. Okay, first things first, you see the zone here. It's going to be on the left side of the map, and you can see the bus path straight down the middle. Now, there's going to be a lot of people in the town area. Just keep that in mind when you're first dropping in so you know where your first rotate is going to be. Now, my squad always lands in ground zero. One of us lands in the hole, and then two of us land in the back cave. This gets us enough money to get a loadout and potentially some early game kills. Kills. Getting your loadout as fast as possible is absolutely essential. You can start racking up those kills as fast as possible. I'm on top. Hey. Someone beat me to ground zero, so I decided to land up top. That way I can get some guns and then pinch with my teammates. Two teams. Only one guy down low on one team. I'm by. Another one somewhere close. I'll make crack. Now, as you can see, I was able to pick up some early game kills and we got a loadout all within the first zone. This is absolutely essential to getting your momentum going in the right direction to start the game. One huge strat that we use and that I can give you guys is that we always have two people only two people hit the first loadout. Now you can see my teammate is all the way in town already and two of us are hitting the loadout. This allows for this loadout to stay here the entire game. Our third teammate is going to hit the game drop when it comes. That way we can have two loadouts on the map at all times. Now as a top 250 team, you have to play extremely aggressive. We're going to go fight people, fight people, fight people all game. It's essential that you get a good flow and a good start. Now, if you're not in top 250, you do not have to play this aggressive. You could play a little bit slower. You can kind of bounce around the power positions based on zone that I outlined earlier in the video. You got I don't see anyone under me. Right floor. I just heard my teammate said we need to wipe this to eight. We're referring to eight teams remaining in the lobby. Once you get to eight teams remaining in the lobby, each kill and assist is worth more points. You want to eliminate as many squads as you can down to eight to get more points for each kill and assist. This is super important for maximizing your points. Hey, boy, one up your ramp right here. Two. Another one here. One's closer. Yeah, I'm helping read. Now, this might sound obvious, but you want to shoot as many people as possible. You want to get as much damage to as many different people as possible so you can get as many assists and kills as possible. So if you even shoot someone one time and they go and die to another team, you're going to get an assist. And these assists will get you a lot of points. Another one, though. Same spot. Other one came back. Okay, selfing upstairs, selfing upstairs. Another one landing on you. Cracked him on the roof. Gonna reload. Absolutely not live. Watch behind you. What? 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 Trying to get get chaos. Doing that right? Live ping. Cracked on my live. Top tower of the pistol. Enemies dropping to the AO. Target down. Marking the rest Still top of tower. Another one landing on you guys? What? Inside the one. Throw it. Buddy. Hiding in 
the bathroom. Your squad mates back on station. Good work. On our loadout. Operators from that squad. Hunt them down. Oh, oh. Positive ID on the bounty targets. Oh, oh, oh. Hunt them down. super important that you have good communication with your teammates and you know when each other are fighting if you guys are split up so that you don't get fully wiped i think they're both on the stairs yep. Knocked that. nice always on me cracked upstairs chasing he's last On the roof. Crack them. Right, teammates a sniper. Teammates gonna be on the right with the sniper. And yellow, top yellow. Well done. He's running. Is he? I didn't hear him shut that door. So as you can see here, we just hit top eight with 46 seconds to go in the second zone. This means that each kill and assist is now worth seven points. I see what I am. Uh... Yeah, let's go fucking snipers out of this fucking lobby. Up on Earth, up on Earth, up on Earth. Absolute. Your squad mates back on station. Good work. Good on the by 20 again. Turn to the right. He's dead today. Other team inside. Cracked one. I'm hit. Chasing me. Second. New team, total team, whole team. Above you. A weird fight. Crack. He's in the room. I might be cheating. One on me. Oh, you fucking suck. Okay, every single game during the third zone, there is a fire sale. This is absolutely essential. Make sure you guys get everything you need for the end game and for the mid game for that matter. A teammate is going to pop an advanced UAV so we know where to go fight. We know our rotates, etc. I would recommend getting gas masks, self, streaks, muni boxes, anything you might need to set you up for the end game and to get more kills. Crack monster scan in the window, second floor. Once respawn is disabled, it is absolutely essential that you guys regroup as a team and play your fights all together. Team fighting once respawn is disabled is super important for winning the game. When it's a 3v3 at the end, if possible, you really want to make sure you get taps and or shots on all three remaining players because the kills and assists are worth 10 points during this time. Zip, try to zip up. Down. I'm going down, I'm going down. Yeah, I'm As you can see, that was a very good game for us. 16 kills and 16 assists for myself, and we got the win. That's going to get you a lot of points regardless of your rank. Now, not every game plays out the same. These strats and these fundamental principles are what we use for every single game. That does it for today's video. I hope this helps and you guys continue to rank up. If you have any questions about rank resurgence, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You were just asking for some change. Now you change. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, about that money shit is strange. Full load of change.